So, hello again and welcome to another episode of Quick Question with Soren and Daniel, the podcast where two best friends and comedy writers ask each other questions and give each other answers. I am one half of that podcast. Senior writer for last week's night with John Oliver, author of How to Fight Presidents by Daniel O'Brien and Bachelor Boy, Daniel O'Brien, joined as always by my co-host, Mr. Soren Bowie. Soren, say hello. It's hello. It's Boys Rule Day. Hello, everybody. I'm Soren Bowie. I'm a writer for American Dad. I just had uh, just had some Burger King, and I'm feeling pretty good. And because I feel good after I eat fast food, I keep doing it. I'm not one of those people <laughs> who feels bad afterwards. And so that's been a big problem for me. Thanks to Rocket Money for supporting our podcast. Rocket Money will quickly and easily identify your subscriptions for you so you can stop paying for the ones you don't want. Stop throwing your money away. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash QQ. It's uh, unfortunately every piece of fast food I've ever eaten has always been exactly what I wanted it to be. Yeah, I've never in my life been let down by mcdonald's or taco bell it's, and even it's... when i'm sick from it afterwards <laughs> that's well, my fault so what i'm what i'm even saying is that i i eat that food i will eat a bunch of french fries and uh in this case i'm eating like a impossible burger because it's from whopper from it's a whopper from um from burger king i will get done with that and drink a whole soda and feel fantastic wow. feel like ah this is how i'm supposed to feel and like feel like ready to go yeah. with the rest of my day and that's the biggest problem i shouldn't i should feel like shit after i eat that stuff i should feel heavy and down and that's why you, that's how you stop eating that kind of thing but when i get through it and i'm like god now i finally feel like i have some energy it's better than that rabbit food salad i had yesterday yeah i, I did I like a keep... <laughs> i did like a soft meal prep this week because i mentioned being a bachelor boy my fiance is out of town she for, in uh los angeles for a week and uh so i just like i was like i'm gonna use this week and and make very healthy decisions and it starts with i'm gonna prep a bunch of food so i can have the same lunch every day and the same dinner every day and it's gonna be uh not a lot of calories and it's gonna have the things that you're supposed to have in a meal plan it's gonna have some protein it's going to have some veggie it's going to have other stuff uh and it's just been such a fucking bummer man eating my stupid chicken pesto with asparagus for lunch every day and just thinking this is this is what science has decided i need and i just disagree i think it would be better if i got to have just a couple of bacon cheeseburgers from mcdonald's well you and you just know in your heart you could go do that at any moment. You're an adult with no. funds for that. And yes. it's so easy. And that's the problem. It's like yeah. It, well, there was a time in my life when I would see commercials for some new crazy shit that Long John Silvers was doing that looked good to me. But I would be like, eh, it's not for me. I'd have to have somebody drive me all the way to Glenwood Springs. And then I had to convince them to give me some money like that. It, it just wasn't going to happen. And yeah. so it wasn't for me. And so it was so easy for me to turn away from it. And convincing yourself that these things aren't for you is you've already indulged in them. You fucked up. You've already indulged yeah. and proven that they are for you. And in fact, I feel great after I do it. And so now it's I, I'm doomed. <laughs> yeah. And it's, again, just the consistency of knowing that they're going to do it exactly the way I like it yeah. every single time. It's I'll. I'll say uh, I've, I've done a thing. I don't know if we've talked about this on the podcast or if anybody gives a shit, but I started eating a salad for lunch every day. Dinners I can't control because I have my children there and we're going to eat whatever children will also eat. So that's like a, mm -hmm. that's already a sunk cost. Like I'm, that's a loss, but I can choose what I'm having each day for lunch. And is I tried that thing where I was like trying a bunch of different, very healthy meals. And that was way worse 
than me just picking the same healthy meal and eating it every single fucking weekday because then it was yeah. just filling the dog food bowl and there was no expectation for something other than that. And when I was doing that, I was back on like, I was like, okay, I figured it out. I, there's no, I, I have, there's not, this isn't a thing I look forward to anymore, which is like a very dark way of putting it. Yeah. But I, this is just something I have to do every day. I will feel the same full by the end if I eat enough of it and then it will be mm -hmm. over and that will be it. And so I started doing that and it was way easier. But the minute I start throwing in anything else or giving myself any sort of license of like, oh, you know, you don't go really well with this is maybe like a little garlic bread. It fucks it all up. Because then I'm like, shit. well, gar if I'm going to have garlic bread, I might as well go get some pasta. I might as well do like a real Italian meal. Like, Let's just yeah. go. <laughs> I uh, took a break from my daily salads to have this stupid veggie chicken uh, pearl couscous meal pl yeah, plan. Yeah, fucked thing. up. Dude. Um, I know, but I also, uh, this is going to sound like we have like, uh, terrible relationships with, with food and Soren, maybe we do. We I don't probably know. Listen do to us. <laughs> we probably do. Um, but I started doing a new gym class. That's like seven in the morning. So okay. I'm out the door by six forty to do an hour long class. It gives, uh, terrible. Uh, just a, a hit class, like a big sweaty yeah. workout. Yep. It's I like, want to die. Right, now this I'm sounds gonna, awful already. Go on. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go home. And even though I've like pretty consistently been doing breakfast bars every day for a couple of years now, it's like, you know, what would be a nice indulgence after this class is a bagel bagel with some <laughs> some business on it. And I'm not going to stop at a bagel place and get one bagel where it would be overpriced. So I should. Should probably get a sack of bagels from the store, <laughs> and then I would probably need some dairy-free cream cheese for it, and maybe avocado. And how else can I dress up this bagel? And I and really enjoyed it, but like fucked myself by eating bagel sandwiches every day for like six days straight until I was out of bagels in that bag because I'm yeah. not gonna freeze them. And I'm not going to throw them out and they're going bad. So I need to eat them. And it's just like, I can't, I've gone from eating like a 200 calorie protein bar every morning to now a sandwich, essentially a, a little breakfast burger every you're day. Eating, yeah. You're eating the prime ingredients for cheesecake every single morning. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I, man, I'm there right, right there with you. I, I think it's probably not a super healthy relationship I have to food, but um, I do the exact same thing where like, if I allow myself a leniency, I don't eat breakfast, but if in the morning I know that I've got like, I'm going to have my kids all day. We're going to a pool or something like that. I'm like, I'm going to get really pissy and kind of irritable if I don't have something in me, uh, before lunch. So, all right, I'll just have some life cereal or like whatever they, they, they're having. I'll yeah. have one of these frozen waffles and then I'll be like, oh my God, eating in the morning is incredible. This is wonderful. Yeah. And the next day, my body's like, okay, what's it going to be today? Something with hollandaise sauce? What are we doing? And, uh, and then like breaking out of that cycle. Does anybody else remember Pop-Tarts? Is it just me? <laughs> breaking out of that cycle is, it's, it's really hard all of a sudden. Yeah. Um, so I just, the more that I can avoid having to make any choice, the more my, the less my body expects. I, I grew yeah. up with a mom who was, she treated food like a penance which was meant that if it tasted good, it was really probably pretty bad for you. And so oh. if she ate something that was really, really gross, she would get latch, she would latch onto it and be like, this has got to be the best thing. This has got to be good for you because it tastes so bad. And so yeah. <laughs> throughout my early childhood, it was like every single day she would be eating and she still kind of does it, but like she eats food that is, She's convinced herself she likes because she's pretty sure she, it's good for her because it tastes bad, which is such yeah. a weird <laughs> backwards way of looking at it. But in some cases, I mean, she's right. She's right on like kale. Kale is there's not a single person in the world who is like, ah, some fresh kale. Can't wait yeah. to get this in my can't wait to force this bark down my throat. Um, but you gotta, like, there's all kinds of prep work that has to be done to it. And then you got to drown it in other stuff like lemon juice and vinegar and stuff. They, she'll just eat raw kale. And I'm like, ah, I don't think you actually like this. I don't think, I don't think this is helping. And whatever you're getting from it is not worth it. No, I have determined. 
Yeah. Not, not, not nourishing your soul. No. So let's get into our show. What do you think? Got oh, some that's a good idea. That would be a good idea for us to do for once. We have been trying to do the show for like three weeks now. Yeah. And we just haven't done it. We that's just end up talking to how about much we want to talk to each other. I think, Daniel. I know. I, we we get on the phone. We get on the horn with mm-hmm. our video conference and we just we're like, oh, what do you what's going on with you, man? What do how yeah. you doing? All right. Shoot. Uh, great. Yeah, we're going to get vulnerable with this this quick question. I think we might um I can't speak for you. I might turn off a lot of people when I get real. But right. I wanted to know what in your house is something that gets a lot of use but that you you really neglect it in terms of cleaning it. This is just something that uh yeah. you use often but ju- it might some might find it shocking how little yeah. attention it gets from a uh, cleanliness. And I'm going to go first because I have three of them. Sure, go ahead. To get the ball rolling. And they're all... It's all okay. okay. I'm not doing anything gross. I've uh, well, decided. We'll, and we'll there's reasons the for all of that. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. So, the the... Which one do I think is safest? So every morning I'll have between two and four cups of coffee in my Keurig machine. I make them uh, one pod at a time, my Dunkin' Donuts coffee. And then directly next to the machine, I have a spoon rest with a little turtle on it. It's very cute. And I have a spoon and I put two packets of poisonous, healthy, good for me sugar in the coffee. And I stir it with that spoon. And I put that spoon back in the spoon rest and there it lives for. I don't want to say. Weeks, but I definitely don't want to say months, so I'm going to just say weeks. Yeah, Okay. And the reason that I'm allowed to do this is because the coffee is hot and hot is clean. So the spoon doesn't get. It's not like I'm I'm putting the spoon in my mouth where where it's dirty and it's not like i'm putting the spoon into like i don't know pie or candy something something that for whatever reason my gut has told me would be worse than coffee coffee is is hot and hot as clean so the spoon doesn't get gross and i use it until even though i have told myself it's okay and I'm not doing anything gross or not doing anything wrong, there is still something in my gut that is like, it's time to trade this out for a different spoon. Nothing has changed, but like, I feel, I no longer feel like I believe me when I say that it's fine. But that's one. Hold on. Let me, let me ask some questions about this. It sits in like a little, shit, a little tray for the spoon, right? Yeah. How Mm -hmm. often does that little tray get cleaned? Same amount of time? They're a package deal, yeah. Okay. So, and the coffee has some sugar in it, right? Something mm-hmm. sweet in it. It's a little Keurig. Yeah. Yeah, That's Stevia. Cool. And then have you, this is like not related. Uh, have you ever just seen like fruit flies in your house? Or have you ever seen like crickets or uh, bugs? The fruit flies do not attack the spoon. We get we get all kinds of like beach gnats and stuff that, that pop out. But they don't, they yeah. don't. So, they don't have I'm not going to suggest that they're like laying eggs in there or anything like that. What I'm suggesting Good. to you is that <laughs> that on a first of all, on a microscopic level, you've got the sugars on there. And so all that's happening each day when this gets wet is it just is creating this really great moist environment for uh, bacteria and mold mm-hmm. and generally probably like more of like a slime mold that if you were to like just go and touch that spoon before you put it back in and see, you might feel that it's a little slippery. <laughs> <laughs> then on top of that, you also, anything that happens to also be in your house is occasionally landing on that and being like, oh, what a nice little treat. And the way that I eat is I throw up on it a little bit and digest it outside my body and then slurp up the slurry. <laughs> sure. So there's a lot of that going on on the spoon too. Now, all of this is to say, if that kind of thing, that can only bother you aesthetically. If you're not getting sick, then who the fuck cares? Don't ever, it can, it, from time immemorial to in perpetuity, this spoon never has to be washed. So 
I think we that agree. you're doing fine. <laughs> I'm just saying. I know. If this, if the, 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 the thought and the knowledge that you have a lot of living things each day that you're putting into your coffee or yeah. pieces of living things, then that, then wash it. <laughs> Listeners well know that I am saving for a wedding right now. And whether you're saving for a wedding or anything else, you like me know that every penny counts. Well, Rocket Money saved me quite a few pennies. Rocket Money found a bunch of subscriptions that I forgot about, things that I hadn't used since 2020 I was still paying for, and Rocket Money helped me find them and cancel them so I could stop being charged every month. How much do you think you're paying in subscriptions every month? The answer is probably more than you think. Most Americans think they spend about $62 per month on subscriptions, but get this, get it, the real number is closer to 300. That is literally thousands of dollars a year, half of which we've probably forgotten about. Thankfully, I started using Rocket Money. They found a bunch of subscriptions I'd forgotten about and helped me cancel the ones I didn't want anymore, like a subscription service that only lets me watch Broadway shows on streaming. It is a shallow pool, and I was paying for it. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills so that you can grow your savings. With Rocket Money... I have full control over my subscriptions and a clear view of my expenses. I can see all my subscriptions in one place. And if I see something that I don't want, Rocket Money can help me cancel it with a few taps. I love how the dashboard shows me this month's spending compared to last month so I can clearly see my spending habits. Plus, they'll help me create a custom budget and keep my spending on track. Good news for weddings. Rocket Money will even try to negotiate lower bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is submit a picture of your bill and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. They'll deal with customer service for you. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has saved a total of 500 million in canceled subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash QQ. That's rocketmoney.com slash QQ. Rocketmoney.com slash QQ. It's a really tough thing because no one is asking me to do anything about this. I'm fine living my life this way. And I truly believe me when I say... The heat is the solution here because um, <laughs> I can tell <laughs> if you're it's it's not quite my uh, water is the solution, which is another yeah. one of my theories that we'll get yeah, to yeah. later. Um, but like when you're camping, you you boil water and the heat uh, makes it better. So this is basically the same process. I've got like really hot water in my coffee mug. And so everything about it is, is hygienic. I truly think that, but I also know that like if my parents came over and they reached for it, I'd be like, no, 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 no. You, you don't want that spoon. That spoon is, <laughs> See, there's evil. nothing wrong with it. It's perfectly fine. It's not for you. It's just for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a little bit of that in me with, I have a, a mug by my, uh, my sink for, uh, for brushing my teeth. Like where I'll brush my teeth and I'll drink out of this mug. It happens to be a porcelain mug because I've tried a glass before and I've shattered it maybe six or seven times to learn my lesson. Sure. And mugs don't shatter as big. And so I have a mug and it's a white mug. And so that you really don't see much going on. But there was a day where like I just picked it up and saw two black dots in the bottom. And I was like, what is that? And then went mm. to touch it and realized the whole bottom was fair very slimy <laughs> and that uh, these no. black dots were the beginning of some actual like visual visual mold like some mold that i could actually see but that something else had already been incubating there for quite some time yeah that's not that's not great um one of my other ones and i think this will be more common than the infinity spoon is uh the if i wasn't living with another person. Yeah. I can't guarantee that the towel I use to dry myself off after every shower would ever see a washing machine. Yeah. I it's it I still I'm not doing it for my fiance. It's not like she is on my case about it or anything like that or I'm embarrassed. I but I definitely do it more because she is here and like I can see the visual cues of like ah her standard towel is gone that must mean it's it's time according to some kind of logic that she has that I don't agree with 
but I don't want to get in a fight about it. So I just yeah. wash my towel when she does. But in my heart and my bones, the towel, I come out of the shower. It's only ever seen you clean. Clean as a whistle. Yeah. I'm, I'm so clean. And then I put the towel on me that I'm, I'm just putting clean water on it. Yeah. And then I'm hanging the towel up. And then in the night, the towel, you know, t- t- uh, takes care of itself th- the way towels yeah. do. Whatever oh, process, I think something happens in the night while it dries. Uh, because dry is a form of heat. And heat, we all agree, is clean. So water and heat are the only things that touch the towel. And it's fun. Moisture and warmth. It's always Nothing fun. grows in moisture and warmth. <laughs> no. Absolutely nothing. It's... I... I know you need to wash your towels. No, I understand. I understand. I also don't know that you need to do that. I think. <laughs> but yeah, I know that we do. But have we tried not? Have we just tried it? <laughs> because I should let our listeners know that I have tried it for long periods of time, just drying myself with the one towel. And there's no weird shit on me. And I smell <laughs> great. And I found someone to... Love me that I haven't <laughs> driven away with some like surprise body odor thing. So you tell me, America. <laughs> I'll say Is it that. better if I wash that towel every day and you and waste so much water? Well, you no. you know the answer to that. No one's washing their towel every day. Yeah. I, unless good. you count really? the, the work good. it's doing on your body, a good washing of it. I get those yeah. put it right across your abs when it's all wet. That's mm-hmm. basically just as good as washing it. Um, Absolutely. I, I'm with you. I mean, I'm, I'm with you to a, to a degree where most of my life I lived that, that very same way. And it wasn't until yeah. I would start toweling myself off, put the towel down and be like, I don't, I think I smell worse than when I originally got out of the shower. What's the difference? Oh, whatever's all over the towel is now all over me. And I think it is just another, like a mold situation. It's a situation where smell like doom. you- yeah, mildew. It's like the towel starts to not smell good and it has nothing to do with you. It has to do with you. You have created a wet, warm environment again every single day where like there's new opportunity for a breeding ground for little microbes. Hmm. Uh, and and also, you don't have to wash that every day, but it, it was good. really, I did get embarrassed by it. My wife at one point came, and then girlfriend was like, you got to wash your towel. And I was like, okay. She's like, it stinks. And I'm like, okay. She's like, it stinks up the whole bathroom. And I was like, okay. <laughs> oh, you're trying to, you're trying to form a core memory. You don't want me to forget this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it was like, she was trying to attack. I was not getting it. And she had to keep being like, I'm hitting you right now. I want you to know that. <laughs> uh, and so, and it did. I mean, it worked for me. The problem is, Daniel, you start Mm -hmm. noticing it everywhere. Once you like, once you start pulling at this thread where you're like, I could stand to be a little cleaner, I bet. I don't really notice it, but I'm sure that if it bothers her, I'm going to be cleaner. And then it becomes your bed sheets and noticing like how often you really should be washing your bed sheets compared to how often you currently are. And then Mm -hmm. it starts being like couches and fabrics in general. And then you go to somebody else's house and all of a sudden, you are disgusted in ways you didn't know you could be where you're like, you walk into somebody else's house and immediately it's apparent to you that the kitchen isn't actually clean, even though everything's picked up Mm. or like the living room clearly hasn't been cleaned, even though you're not seeing anything. It's just like this, (laughs) this general smell or aura of it where you're like, Oh, this is dirty. This is dirty. And they don't know. (laughs) There's stuff I, I willfully put out of my mind, like, like a, a, a table runner that lives on our table, a, a, a fabric runner right down the center of it that um, we're never eating on that. We have like placemats, um, but I know the food particles are around and I know that I didn't ever lift up the runner and clean underneath it or like run the runner through the, the washing machine. Yeah. Uh, and like, if I don't want to think about it too hard, I'm just like, 
well, we don't do anything under that runner. We're never like spilling things. Nothing yeah. ever. It never sees any action or any any light. My sins so I'm don't sure live down there. <laughs> it's got to just be as clean as if something had just come off the factory floor. It's as clean as if we just popped it right out of the box. And then the, the real part of my brain will just be like, sir, how could it be? How yeah. could this thing that has been living on your table touched by you? When you're sweaty after a run, how could it – explain it to me. How could it possibly be clean under there? This thing that has never seen a fucking damp rag to wipe it down. How could it <laughs> conceivably be clean? How could it not? The same way underneath my <laughs> oven is completely clean. Watch. When I move the of oven course. out of the way, this has never seen the world. <laughs> Look how gorgeous, pristine it is down there. Yeah, I – I do know that feeling. Um, let me let me give you one. Great. I'm I'm but looking I, at it. Right I don't now. have great. I don't have tremendous confidence that you're gonna like my third one. Okay, this one's pretty gross. Um, Good. But I think that's also probably pretty common. So remember, everybody, that you're on our side. I I have and I always have had just embarrassing keyboards for my computers like not just crud down between the keys that's all pretty standard sometimes food crumbs not clear not clear if those are food crumbs or somehow like boogers or what what has caused those but then also the keys themselves are yeah. i i don't know how to describe it other than it looks like i was impacting the key so hard that it was singed around the outside of my fingertip mm -hmm. where you get that like what what I can describe as like a uh, bathtub being emptied, and then there's that ring of filth <laughs> yeah. around the outside. That's what it looks like. It looks like the indent of the key. There's a little ring around the outside of what I assume is just years of finger oils. Yeah, and and every once in a while, I do this thing where I go <sighs> and I blow, and a couple Fixed. things go away, and I'm like, done. Yeah, that looks that looks perfect. But it's I, I've now taken my computer other places, opened it up immediately shut it because it didn't even occur to me to, to think that this might be dirty until I was in the presence of other humans seeing it through different eyes that I thought this is genuinely embarrassing for me to yeah. open a computer here. No one should see this. My computer is filthy. Um, not this one as much as my old one because this one's newer, but the old one, <laughs> It'll get weirdly, there. weirdly, the keys stopped working on the old one. So I just got a new computer. <laughs> but when I still had the old one, um, I... Uh, this is like the Emmys a couple years ago. We were still all on Zoom. They weren't doing in-person ceremonies yet. Um, and a, my friend and coworker Kay, I brought her over to like live stream with us and our other coworkers to watch the results together. And not only was the keyboard like the whole computer like noticeably filthy. Another thing yeah. that I didn't realize I did. Until I guess there was another person who can like ob observe the Schrodinger's cat of my life is that I had the camera lens on my laptop covered up because I don't want Mark Zuckerberg and Big Brother totally stalking me on my computer. So I have that covered up and not with like a piece of fancy uh, like <laughs> artisanally crafted tinfoil or anything like that. Just... <laughs> I had a fucking band-aid. I was like, this is oh, this is oh, two things. It both blocks it and sticks it. This way I don't have to waste tape or like cut up a piece of thing. I'm just gonna put this opaque oh. band-aid. And like it was never used on anything else. I didn't it doesn't like matter. rip it off my arm. It didn't matter. A band-aid like, in the wild is the grossest thing you could possibly say. Band-aid in the wild <laughs> that like I was peeling off my computer. And then very absently, like, oh. setting it aside to put it back on later. And then I could just, like, oh, feel yeah. the energy of my coworker. It was like, oh, I don't think I'm allowed to do this. I don't think <laughs> this is okay. <laughs> that was so magnanimous of Kay not to say anything. <laughs> what a good person. Yeah. That's, yeah, the, the Band-Aid is rough. I mean, I do think anytime if, you see a Band-Aid, you're, you're, you're automatically thought, like, you're, You've been, it's been drilled into your head. Don't touch that band aid if it's like an open band aid in the world. 
it's <laughs> such a bummer. And like whenever I'm someplace, if I'm at the, the food pantry where you're like in an enclosed space with people and I see a bandaid on the ground, I'm just like, fucking who? Which I need to know which one of you is yeah. down a bandaid and you're just you're just out loose out there in the world now touching things. What was that Band-Aid doing a second ago that it's not doing anymore? <laughs> I know it wasn't something yeah. harmless like protecting my security on my laptop. I know it was something gross. <laughs> I know it was on your body somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Man, that one is that one's pretty rough. I also have occasionally noticed how dirty my keyboard is, continued on working and done nothing about it. And then at the end of my I'm like, done writing or whatever and i'm like done for the day i'm gonna push sleep on the computer and just watch the screen fade to black and just seeing this jackson pollock of what i assume is like spit or like yeah. whatever the fuck is coming off of me and hitting the screen and i'm just not bothering to ever do anything about and it's it's horrifying it's horrifying how much of me is in this computer <laughs> yeah it's one of those things that i get to my mid-30s and it's like oh it's it's crazy we never figured out how to clean laptops. Yeah, we should. I mean, let me let me Google that. Let me see if we actually. Oh no, we everybody does that. I see. I understand now. Okay. I see. I I, I am an I, incurious I, person. At Cracked, we had desktops, and we had the kind of keyboard that was separate from the computer, and you plugged it in. And then I do remember one day there deciding it was enough, deciding this was just too much filth, and unplugging it and taking it to the trash can and just turning it over and shaking it. And like the snow globe of viscera that I created was hugely embarrassing. Like in a way where I was yeah. like, I, I don't think this is something I should be even doing in public. There's so much coming out of this that it's yeah. genuinely disgusting even me. And it's only me in there. And it's all because it's all. It's all you, right? It's all your cells yeah. and, and yeah, a, just oh. like chunks of finger and stuff. Yeah. It's just a reminder of how how oily and gross you are i've i've been at my computer at my house our setup that we used to have was i was faced up against a wall in the house and i would wear i wouldn't wear shoes in the house so i'd either be barefoot or in socks and then pulled the desk away at one point to move things around and reorganize and just like the black film at the bottom of the wall for where my feet were sitting up against it <laughs> where i was like immediately humiliated and disgusted with myself that i was creating all of this it's no good yeah um my other one that uh i think my logic in the first two examples are pretty airtight i think it's pretty it's healthy hot, and hygienic hot clean. and good hot is clean wet is clean we're done it's 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 hygienic <laughs> Um, this one is pure laziness and it changes probably about once a year. Um, I am wearing, uh, the, my shorts of the summer. They're the shorts that I got at the start of the summer. And, uh, it was like, honey, get used to seeing these. These are my walking around the house shorts. Uh, they are not for the rest of the world. They are my comfortable right. slip on shorts that I'm I'm for too long I pull from the same pile of like my walk around that the the apartment shorts are interchangeable with like running shorts and workout shorts and I'm just going through too many pairs of shorts and it seems wasteful and so to solve my own problem like a pioneer I'm just going to wear these shorts all the time and I think that's fine if I spill something on them sure I'm not an animal. I'll wash them. Wash them. When it becomes convenient. But otherwise, they're... I'm not like... Pissing and pooping on myself. So I'm not getting any of that stuff on there. And I'm not running around outside where there's dirt. I'm yeah. not playing with bugs. I'm in my clean home. Sitting on the couch in my shorts. And at night, I will take them off. And put them on the ground so they can wait for me. To rejoin to me the next day. <laughs> yeah. And like by this time next year, these shorts will be a distant memory. I will have purchased a different pair of summer shorts. And yeah. that's going to be the look of 2025. Uh, but for now, it's these, these, these blue, way too short shorts 
that I love. Yeah. And I would not wash them because I need them. What would I wear if I was washing them? <laughs> and and they're near the wettest, warmest part of your body. And right. as we've already determined, <laughs> they're the cleanest. Therefore, yeah. the cleanest. I I I know how it sounds. I know. <laughs> I know it's the crotch and the butt. I know. <laughs> I know that's where things get damp and bad. And I know I, that when I said I'm not pissing and sh- or shitting on myself, the listeners were like, yeah, we weren't worried about that. That's not the only thing. It's just, uh, it's all the sweat <laughs> in the darkest, most <laughs> sinful place on your body. <laughs> Yeah, but I, also, I mean, there are jeans you get, and the jeans are like specifically saying them, "Don't fucking wash these." Yeah, in those terms, the tag says, "Don't fucking don't wash fucking these." Wash these. Don't you even think because about the, it? You talk to a certain, like I would say, a bunch of people in the world. You tell them, "Do you wash your jeans?" They're like, "No, you're not supposed to wash jeans." And you're like, "Okay," but then what are well, we? All I guess doing? I'll just keep. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll just keep living in these. Um, <laughs> So there are like pants that are designed that way. You have a layer of protection between you and the shorts themselves. Mm-hmm. There's no harm in just, you have a, a season of those shorts and then the shorts are gone. The shorts stop existing as far yeah. as you're concerned. And I can't fault you for that. I think that that's no. reasonable. And here's, here's the situation. The situation is this. I'm not an unreasonable person. If I thought the shorts needed to be washed, they'd be washed. That sounds... yeah. Like a good plan to you? Okay. Yeah. Do you ever... No, this do I is ever think pretty... they need to be washed? I do not. <laughs> this is a pretty gross question. But do you ever just grab them while you're not wearing them, push them into your own face, and take a deep inhale? Of course. Okay, great. Then you're fine. You're yeah. doing fine. Then if you're still wearing those shorts after doing that, then you're in good shape. Yeah. Because that's something I will... I, I love my children. I will do that to my own clothes. I won't even do that to theirs because it's because it's so the prospect of what I would smell is so horrifying in another yeah. person's. Uh, but like you, that's how you test yourself. It's yeah. a it's since time immemorial, since we were living in caves. I think that's how you would determine whether I'm presentable to the outside world is if I get as close as humanly possible, a place no one else will ever be in this l- lion pelt. And I'm okay with it, then the world's going to be fine with it. I'm my harshest critic. Yeah. I wouldn't lie to me. I have nothing. There's no benefit for me to be stinky in the world. So I can I can trust me. I'm looking out for me. <laughs> my, last night, my wife found a pair of my daughter's tights on the ground. She's like, are these clean? And then she went to go do that test. And I was like, don't, no, don't. Like, why, let's just wash them. Like you don't have to, you don't have to take the psychic damage of like whatever that would, whatever you get from that. They're so small. Let's just throw them in the in the hamper with everything else. It costs us nothing. Let's just <laughs> don't do that for another person. It's so funny. <laughs> just, just look. You could you be happy. Have a little respect for yourself. Um, yeah, but my, I think my keyboard is my very worst one. I obviously used to have a lot more. I, when I was younger and lived for the first time alone after college, I, I, I mean, I lived with a roommate, but I was like, I had my own apartment there at the end of it, friends came over to help us clean it because back mm-hmm. then your friends would do anything for you. <laughs> and so we were getting ready to leave. We wanted our deposit back. And so as we're moving out, we had some friends help clean it. And a good friend of mine, Kim Carrie Tireman, she was going to help clean my bathroom. And she did. And then afterwards came up to me and she was like, that was the worst bathroom I've ever seen. And I was like, <gasps> oh, shit, I'm sorry. She's like, I've lost a lot of respect for you. And like, oh, shit. doing it in a very earnest way. <laughs> I was like, okay, yeah, the point, point taken. Uh, okay, I will, from this point forward... Never be in this situation again because that feels brutal. <laughs> yeah. That's, I'm very, I would like to talk to her about that because I'm not going to name someone, but I know you know who I'm talking about, who was a friend of ours, who was our age, who lived in absolute uh, unconscionable Squalor. filth. 
And yeah. I was never... I don't have a personal precedent for telling or being told you can't live like this. But I really uh-huh. like grappled with it. I would be at one of the various homes that he's lived in in the, the 10 years that I knew him in Los Angeles. And like, there's all the stuff you expect. There's the, the, the clumps of, of hair and neglect dust that just like piles up behind doors and each cor- other. corners in the bathroom yeah. where it's just like, ah, oh, this looks like someone in, in, in college lives here and they don't clean behind their toilet because they're in college. There's all that like very obvious stuff, but there would also be like he took a trip out of state for a long time and then he came back and had left a plate of food on his bedroom floor that entire time. And this was the only time I said anything to him about about how he was living. But I was like, hey, uh, I don't want to embarrass you. There was a tremendous amount of ants in your room. I think they seem to be coming from that corner over there and going right to the plate of old food on your floor. This is me playing detective. I've, I, I think that's what's happening. Sleuth it out. As I'm like panicking inside and he was just like, Oh, that's embarrassing. That shouldn't, that shouldn't be like that. He picked up the plate and he brought it to the kitchen somewhere and like vacuumed up the ants and uh that was the solution to that problem that day but i but between that and like everything else i've seen in his home i was very it almost seemed like an intervention would be the only ticket because i just thought like he can't he can't live like this but he's he's got to know yeah. that it comes from a place of love and that we're looking out for him but like dark thought who will ever love him? Who will will <laughs> accept living like this and 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 being in this and sharing this kind of space? We just it's it's for his own good, but we need to do something. But I eventually did yeah. nothing because that's the kind of because I've never had that conversation. I don't know if it would be like, how dare you? I don't know if it would turn into a fight or anything yeah. or if or worse than a fight he would just be like yeah man i uh decided kind of a while ago that like this was um it wasn't a good use of my energy or time to to think about this aspect of my life so i just don't do it and i'm much happier right. as a result of how much free mental health i've given myself by just deciding i'm the kind of person who lives like this and i'd be like okay great i'm glad you had that decision I, we can't be friends anymore. I can't. <laughs> or if we are, I, I just can't, can't do here. it. I, so it, that is, that's bad. It's really bad. And it's really bad when you notice somebody who is more filthy than you are comfortable with. Yeah. The issue is that's a sliding scale. And to somebody else, you're that person. No. Somebody else. <laughs> I, 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 it's. I'm not saying you are that way. I've been to your places and you are immaculate because you have a, a phobia of bugs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. So you do take very good care of the places you live, but it it is a scale. Like there's always somebody who, in every relationship, somebody who sees more dirt or more disorder than the other person, and it's a constant fight. Like that's a war that never ends because. Either one of you, one of you has to change. Either one of you has to concede and live in somewhere that they're not comfortable and they're, they're, everything's more dirty, or the other person has to say, "You mean more to me than than any of the, this," and so I will the, clean up. I will just clean up, even when I don't that think I've anything needs cleaning. Accumulated. <laughs> anything that I, even though I don't see it, I'm going to continue to try, and uh, and so it means that there's like a whole scale of that. There's a a, a broad spectrum of people and to somebody else they i guarantee somebody has come over to my house before and been like oh fuck i don't even want to sit down in here like that's got to have happened because short and and i don't know if that means that i'm unhealthy or they're unhealthy or anything like that but like it's i 
there, it has to have with the spectrum that there is. I know that there are people who are far cleaner than us and far more immaculate with their houses and how their upkeep of like cleanliness. Yeah. So, so someone is grossed out by me currently. I'm, I can almost guarantee it. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. Well, show is quick question. This was a pretty vulnerable one. Uh, yeah. Don't. Um, here's the interesting thing. Uh, don't come at me with anything. If you want to bring to me a study <laughs> that says my theory on towels is bullshit, I'm not going to read it. If you're going to come to me and say, I do the same thing, we're the same, we are not the same. I don't want to hear that either. I just want to talk my shit sometimes and then not think about it ever again. This is one of those times. Thank you for watching and listening to Quick Question. We are on YouTube. If you didn't know that already, you can watch our faces as we talk about these things and be surprised at how I didn't turn red with embarrassment once this whole time. Yeah. Uh, you can find Soren or I on Blue Sky having fun, making jokes. You can email the show at QQ with Soren and Daniel at gmail.com. You can find us on Instagram. You can find us on Patreon where we answer questions from you, the listener. We do it two times a month. It's very fun. You can hear more music from the band that did our theme song, Mirex bandcamp.com we are recorded and engineered uh and uh, presided over by gabe harder and today jacob weinstein uh special thanks to them for making the show happen and that is all of the things we say at this part of the show yeah. correct you, great it. hell yeah at this point also if we if something falls off the back it hardly matters yeah if people uh, just listen to another episode and you'll get all the pertinent information. Yeah. Okay, bye. Bye. I've got a quick, quick question for you, all right? I want to hear your thoughts. I want to know what's on your mind. I've got a quick, quick question for you, all right? The answer's not important. I'm just glad that we could talk tonight. So what's your favorite? How did you get? friends and comedy writers if there's an answer they're gonna find it i think you'll have a great time here i think you'll have a great time here